What if the American government wasn't the perfect system of government? In that dream world of a fantasy, what would the perfect government look like? Well, in the 14th century, the Siena Nine were convinced that they had the best government that would ever exist in the past, present, or future. So much so that they hired Ambrosio Lorenzetti to paint a number of murals or a number of paintings on their walls to describe what a good government or a bad government would look like. My name is Eugene Jesse Nash, fourth, and today I'm going to argue that the effects of good government in city and country should stay in the next edition of Art History, and I will use three points today to discuss why. One will be the educative value for art students on perspective that it uses. Two will be the elements that made the scenery Siena for art historians. And three will be the characters uh, that he created within the fresco painting and how he created them. So to begin, Ambrosio Lorenzetti was a master of perspective. And his pinnacle work in creating his stylistic dual perspective, which I'll now discuss, is his, our very own effects of good government in the city and country. So let's talk about this dual perspective. It differs from the standard three-dimensional perspective from one vantage point that we're all used to, because uh, that's how our eyes see. He took his own unique take on this. Um, and even though he had never experienced one-point perspective, he created his own dual perspective, uh, as I call it, and well, we'll just let you look at this painting, uh, which is the Miracles of St. Nicholas, to see uh, how that turns out. So just a question. Are we looking at this image from the ground level or from a bird's eye view? The answer is both. And that, that is the artistic style of Ambrosio Lorenzetti. It's a marvel to understand, but a few aesthetic qualities occur um, in the effects of good government in the city and country when he does this. And first, Timothy Hyman in his book Sienny's Painting pointed that the humans of the scene are uh, disproportionately larger than the buildings of the scene uh, to enforce the perspective of the ground level. But at the same time, the angle the ground recedes insist a different perspective and you can see this angle of the ground recedes by uh, the horseman that's up in the upper left corner at an equal standing of the second level of the buildings and that's the ground receding as if you're looking at a bird's eye view so he draws our attention towards the people as we are on the ground level um, we're fooled to believe that we're standing at the same level as everybody else but at the same time, we're also looking at this from a high point. We can see the entire city at one time. We're not just seeing the people of the city. We're seeing the entire city. And this is exactly what the Siena 9 democracy was. It was a bunch of citizens who were elected officials. They were elected to their position. And they served their position for a short period of time. Then they returned to being a citizen again. They were had power, yet humility. They were big picture thinkers. But at the same time, they would return to be regular citizens to prevent uh, the feudal system from occurring in Siena in the 14th century. So art students should find inspiration from this perspective style of Ambrosio Lorenzetti and how he used this dual perspective of above and ground level just to force the point of the roles of these people. He used perspective to show the roles. That should open up the eyes of our students to use perspective for all kinds of other uh, purposeful goals and just using the perspective, which brings so much more power to the actual work itself and what's contained inside the image. So this could be, this perspective could be a reason all in of itself, but there's an art side of this book and then there's an art history side of this book. So let's go into the art history side of this book. So in addition to the perspective, art history students, art history majors uh, specifically, will see firsthand the Sienese architecture, culture, and landscape through this painting that he's created. There is no doubt in my mind that Lorenzetti had the image of Siena in mind when he created this image. He was creating it for the Sienese government so that they could look at for generations and generations to come. If in any way he created something that wasn't Siena, 
he would have been fired, he would have been discredited, this work would never have ended up in a first, in the fifth edition of art history. Uh, he definitely wanted to create a Siena in mind, that's what he was commissioned to do, that's what he did. And most would start their argument, if you look up on the internet or look on Wikipedia, um, a lot of people will start their argument saying this is definitely Siena, because in the upper left hand corner you will see a bell tower and a steeple that are original just to Siena, just, um, just near the city center. However, uh, Timothy Hyman, in his book, Sienese Art, would argue that out of the tons of time that he spent years, he spent years living by this painting uh, by Ambrosio Lorenzetti. He would insist at this point, and he insists in his book, that those are later editions by revision artists as opposed to the original um, painter. So, thanks to Timothy Hyman, I will not be using the point of those two buildings up there. And instead, I will use the elements of the architecture of the normal buildings here and show how they follow the same gothic style in the modern images of Siena. So we have the images here. Uh, this is the painting. Um, pay attention to the architecture. You're going to see some arches. You're going to see cuboto structures. You're going to see a solid paint um, on most of the walls. There's nothing too fancy or too colorful. And this is this picture is by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Org Organization. So United Nations, it's a credible source. Uh, this is the modern day Siena. And you see right here in this little corner, I'm going to blow it up for you, that this has the same uh, arches in the windows. It has the same, or angled roofs, I should say. And it has the same um, kind of monochromatic, solid painted building. So with his recreation of this cityscape, if Siena was ever bombed or had some other natural disaster ha happen to it, then we would still, art historians would still have uh, an idea of what Siena looked like because of the painting by Ambrosio Lorenzetti, um, its picture being inside of the art history books. So Lorenzetti's The Effects of Good Government has elements useful for art students and now also art historians, making it even more so useful to be in the next book by Marilyn Stockside. So let's get back to one final point on why this painting needs to be seen by general art students who are just studying this for the artistic value of it as opposed to the historical value. Lorenzetti was very, very careful in painting his characters. And what do I mean by that? This was a Juan Fresco painting. So this means he was applying the paint to wet plaster, and when it dried, it was done. That was it. So he couldn't put as much detail as in his people and as much time into his people as he may have had in other forms of painting because he was more focused on the cityscape, more focused on that perspective, more focused on that landscape. So when he was focusing on these people, he had to create characters that explained his scene, um, and he had to use contextual clues to kind of give us an idea. He had he brought in some contextual clues to help him out, and he picked some very um, intelligent. He, he thought through the characters that he picked out so that he could have a certain narrative that would go well with the scene in mind that they enjoyed. So first, the people in the city. In this specific painting, I have to say that the people are what make the city. It's the very, the roles that they play and the placement that they have makes this a city and not just a town that happens to have people in it, but a functioning city uh, run by a good government, as it was meant to be. Our eyes are first drawn to the dancers in the street, who are very energetic and very emotional. They have, they're free, they're jubilant, and they choose to spend this time to relax. This says that the government is doing a great enough job that the people are very happy to be living in this town. And that's very nice for our eyes to first be drawn to. It's because they're big, um, because they're kind of excited um, that we're, our eyes are first drawn to this. And the next people our eyes are drawn to are a shopkeeper and a school teacher. And they, the shopkeeper is shown by his wares, that there's wares about him he is selling. This means that the people in the city have money to buy wares and that this man has time to make wares and that he feels comfortable making wares because this city is functional and people are not too poor to buy his wares. Um, the school teacher, he is shown by his podium and his students ever so closely watching him. Um, this also illustrates a functional city and that the children are being brought up not to have to repeat the same things that their elders had gone through, but that they can take a step forward into the future um, with a new knowledge that uh, they've been taught from their ancestors, from the educational system. That shows functionality in the city as well. 
Um, and then finally, he chooses to put a lot of animals throughout the scene. He didn't have to do this, but um, just for the time period and just to add more life to the scene, he added animals. And without the fulfillment of these roles, this city may as well have been a group of buildings. But because he chose to fulfill these roles in these ways and place them in a way that our eye kind of naturally goes from through the city, we see this as a city and not just as a group of buildings. We see this as a functional city with a functional government. Um, and then lastly, the people in the countryside are distinctly illustrated differently than many other paintings of serfs in the land of a kingdom. Um, normally they would be seen with kind of a destitute poverty state, but these people are not at all seen as that way. And how are they not seen at all that way? The workers are standing upright they're a slight arch to their back. They're almost in a contrapasto position in their labor. They seem very comfortable with their work. They, there's no bondage, no malnutrition, no poverty at all depicted in this image. These are workers that are happy to work for Siena in the countryside in the sun or in the rain. They're happy to work out in that countryside for this functional city and this functional government. And what more would the Siena 9 want to see than serfs, people who are working the fields, just as happy as the citizens who are in the city. That means that the feudal system has been thrown out. The Siena 9 is a successful form of government. And thus, art student should find value in Lorenzetti's genius skills of character creation um, because he thought through each and every one of those characters and he created those characters in a way that really um, enforces what the Siena 9 wanted to see in their own city. Uh, he made this functionality, he made this good government um, just by these characters um, in addition to the scene. So why would Marilyn Stockstead not want this in her next book? The Siena 9 saw Ambrosio Lorenzetti as an artist who could create paintings on a wall with, beauties, with beauty and purpose, just a regular painter. They hired him to establish visual ideals for the operations of their government. What they did not realize is that this man's painting would transport their meeting room into the attention and books of the highest scholars in art history. They had no idea that the painting Ambrosio Lorenzetti would create would become one of the highly respected panoramic frescoes for study by thousands of art students. Lorenzetti wasn't creating just a painting, just a masterpiece, just a history painting. He was creating a piece for education in the history of art. He created his own perspective. He gave art historians the most accurate depiction of Siena that he possibly could and he teaches art students what to consider in their character creation. And all I ask again, why would this work not remain in the edition, the next edition, the sixth edition of Art History by Marilyn Stockstead? Thank you.